Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. I am here at augmentedhearing.io with Martin and Meta. Is that okay? Exactly. All right. So yeah, so tell Danish me about name. the company and, and uh, what you do and how cool it is. Yes, so we are two out of three co-founders of Augmented Hearing. We have Michael also right over here. Howdy, there you go. <laughs> and we're all passionate about AI speech, en speech enhancement. And this is because we have a very unique time to be alive, in fact. Because we know that's a problem with lots of people living with noise environments, whether that is at work or in critical missions trying to save lives or in communicating over the radio or just hanging out in a, in a very noisy environment in a cafe or in a conference like the one <laughs> yes, we're in right now. Just, uh, if you don't hear it, it, I'm actually having a problem hearing you right now because it's so noisy. So yeah. Sure, and, and, and this noise is called babble noise in, right. in audio geeky language, uh, which is actually the hardest noise to remove. We can try and do a test and you can post process this and see how it goes. Okay. Uh, so what we think is so exciting about these times is the new capabilities of AI. Because about 10 years ago, you couldn't make an algorithm that would distinguish a cat from a dog, even if you had the strongest computer in the world. But today, we can do amazing things when processing audio. So the thing is, most audio solutions you find in the world today run on digital signal, digital signal processing, DSP. And this is going to be a revolution when you introduce AI to do your audio processing. It's a little right. bit equivalent to when I take a, a photo with my iPhone camera, and it recognizes here's my the faces of my children, and here's the background, right? right? So, so this this photo or this this quality of, of this image is much better than if I use a, a mirror reflex camera because I don't know how to operate that, right? This is powered by AI because it understands semantically what's in the picture, and what's interesting here, right? The same thing we're going to apply to speech, such that we understand what is going on, what is the voice in, in focus here, and what is all the background stuff that is less relevant. So we are empowering the user to take control of how much of the ambient noise they want and how much they want to, to leave in there. Right. And okay. we do this by, by recognizing uh, voice characteristics and adapting the, the, the audio processing specifically to each individual voice. Okay. Yeah, we, we think it's a great uh, real world application of AI that's really has a, a practical uh, value. And uh, we, we, we see it as inevitable, but it's also something we're very passionate about because uh, I was working 23 years in the hearing care industry, and so was uh, Meta and Michael, my two co-farmers. Co so we are, we are very passionate about uh, speech, and we're very passionate about uh, audio, and uh, we want to make a really great company that does a good thing for the world by bringing this into the world. And we're looking at bringing into bringing it into as many use cases as possible. Right, right. We're starting with critical communication, which is firefighters, police, um, who every day uh, are living in an insane uh, environment with very bad radios, bad technologies. They don't even have a DSP processing, actually. Right. So uh, we see there's a, a great opportunity. Uh, we see AI as basically replacing the digital signal processing in the audio domain, and we want to be a, a leader in that, and right. basically realize superhuman uh, hearing and, and speech. Very cool. And we were talking about before we started shooting that you said, so if we could look at this picture here, it's not just removing background noise, but also enhancing the, uh, the human, the, the speech audio. Yeah, so, so this yeah. is our geeky poster. So over here you have, it's called a spectrogram, so you have the, the time axis along here. Right. And then you have different frequencies here. And uh, what we see here is a lot of speech, that is the, the white or yellow stripes here. And then the pink stuff is, is background noise. And over here we've enhanced the speech. So you can now see that these, uh, these patterns, these light up patterns are becoming much more clear. And these patterns are exactly what your brain is trying to detect when you're trying to magically understand speech. Right. So right. this is how we're applying our neurocognitive insights in how the brain actually transforms an acoustic signal to phonetic information into sentences so you can understand what's being said. Because we know essentially this is what people need. They need to understand right. what's being said and to be perceived the way they, they want to be perceived. So Have you noticed any linguistic issues like if you train it in one language, does it do well in other languages, or do you have to train it for each language? Sure, there can be there can be linguistic differences, especially if you want to go from 
uh, non-tonal tonal languages to tonal languages. Right, right, right. But the yeah. first thing we did was to just train it with English, and okay. then we spoke Danish to it, and it worked perfectly. Okay. So it genera generalizes quite well, actually. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah. So just a little fine tuning in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. and, and the idea for us is that, so so we want to, as Martin said, uh, deploy this across all kinds of platforms, all kinds of use cases, because we know that noise and poor audio quality is just it's such a big issue to many people, and it's it's right. ba basically like a thief in the night draining your your cognitive energy without yes. you noticing yes. before it's too late and you're just tired. Right. So we really want to solve this problem for all mankind. Right. Um, and what was I about to say? Um, so. Um, yeah, so the thing is, we're trying to design a technology which is basically just an extension of your brain. So it's not supposed to be fine-tuned to whatever microphone and whatever distance to the microphone you have right, in whatever right, right. device. Yeah. Of course, there can be adaptations, but we want to have a, an algorithm that is basically just an ex extension of your brain. So if a brain can understand it, even though you're straining, so should the algorithm. And the al al algorithm should just make an easier job for your brain. Okay. And and so one of the one of the really cool aspects of this is that the the inference engine is actually you said it's it's very low power. It can run on it's, a very low it's power. It's tiny, chip. yeah. So so it can run on the phone, but also whoops, but also directly inside the headphone uh, processor that's in the headphone. So okay. it runs uh, yeah natively on a phone. It can be okay. embedded in whatever kind of app you have. Right. It can be embedded in web audio if you have okay. like a web audio or a web RTC, uh, application. Right. Or I can right here. It's running right in in uh, Google Chrome. Okay. It's a small local element, so it's not running on any uh, cloud server or anything. It's running awesome. directly in the browser. And could people like go to this site and actually demo it themselves? Sure. Yeah. If you cool. go to our web page, you'll find multiple yeah. demos. Sweet. Yeah. Augmentedhearing.io/demo. So yeah. Yeah, so and, and you cool. can you can go upload your own files if you have uh, audio clips that you want cleaned up, or just hear how it goes. Yeah, and you, uh, we, you know, before we started filming, I did a demo, and it was, it was pretty remarkable. Yeah. It's so it's so loud in here that it's actually a little hard to tell because there's so much other noise. But yeah. I could definitely distinctly hear the difference between the two. Yeah. So this is what we're trying. We're using to prove that we didn't pre-record and then pre-tune right, anything right, to right, our right. voices, right? It generalizes quite well. This is also to find in App Store. We can uh, send you the link afterwards. Oh, very cool. Um, and you can bring this wherever. And I brought it to my daughter's school where there was like a hall of, of, of kids. Uh, for They were ready for singing and they were talking and there was a piano right. playing and stuff. <laughs> and we'd sit down and have a quiet conversation with this. Wow, that's that's amazing. So that there are huge use cases. And obviously, as you said, the critical uh, emergency services is a very important one. But we were also talking because, for selfish reasons, I was like, "Man, if I could get rid of background audio for my videos, so this could eventually have amazing applications for outside of just emergency services and yes. things, but for entertainment, for content, for broadcast, all of that kind of stuff." Yeah. Some are really convenient, like if you want to have your your uh, um, your home recorded uh, audio sound like studio recordings, right? Then you can right. do this processing. Right. It's a little bit like if you think of, of the old uh, cameras and the old phones, right? They didn't right. take really nice pictures. No. But with AI, the, with AI, they take brilliant pictures. Right. Uh, and this is and the good part is that the phones now have neural engines built in so that they're kind sure. of they're designed yeah. to be able to work with stuff like yeah. what you guys have. So yeah. When when that is said, of course we wanna we wanna solve all the convenience use cases, but we are strongly driven by a passion to change people's lives. Right. Right. Because this right. is why we why we believe that the technology really has its justice to excellent. Like all, all the stuff that you don't notice that you get tired over over a long day in in video meetings or <laughs> when hanging out with people. You all will be very tired after today, I'm sure, because yeah, of the yeah. amount of noise. So yeah, that's that's it's really world changing and I think that video has or images have gotten perhaps too much like focus and, and there's a good reason for it because it's very easy to tell a dog from a cat well, but, well, we but audio say, it's time to bring up audio we used to yeah. say video killed the audio star right, right? <laughs> <'Cause> it, <laughs> audio is invisible <laughs> it's it is so easy to overlook right and right. you need to be geeky to understand what's going on because when, when you're starting to talk about audio audio it's gone already you cannot inspect right. it visually like, like you can exactly. with images right? which is why you have to turn it into an image exactly <laughs> so yeah <laughs> but but it is it's a very challenging thing because also the latency's got to be very low the processing yeah. is more of a linear type of processing. Yeah. 
um, rather than spatial. So there's a whole, there's a lot of different tricks. So yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking to me about this. And again, for folks who want to demo this, just definitely go to Augmented Hearing. Dot io slash demo and you can run a demo yourself and check it out. But thank you so thank much. Thank you all John, so much. For by. <laughs> I appreciate Take it. Care. Everybody have a great day. Bye bye. <laughs>